I just feel like this is what I was born to do. When I was a little kid, you know, I would dream, I would make up performances in my head, music and dance. And, you know, when I would daydream, it was always me performing and doing something. And I feel if I can't do that, then I can't really be me. I just get very excited. And my nickname used to be Zuber for exuberance. That's what my mom called me. So yeah, I've always stuck out like a sore thumb, for sure. Hey everybody, I am Suzanne, kitten on the keys. From there, I started working in vintage clothing, dressing in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and aesthetic became a really big part of what I did. I mean, I couldn't just put on my sweats and go play the piano. I just focus on a lot of different musical eras, and I just try to make it fun. Shirley Temple is credited as saving the nation with happiness and lightheartedness. Shirley Temple is probably A, my biggest influence. I love David Bowie, I love Elton John, Mae West. All these people were really fun and flamboyant and incredible musicians and show people. You cannot be unhappy with a little ukulele in your hand, strumming and singing. It's, it's so fun. It's a joyful instrument. And I learned more about music by playing the ukulele than I did playing the piano. It was interesting, the way I was brought up. The uke taught me more about music. So I started picking up the accordion, and it was so hard to learn how to play. My first performing experience happened at three years old. I was an angel singing off key away in the manger. I did uh, church services and rest homes. Also uh, sang for the Lord all over the United States in a church youth group. People would be, you know, pouring gravy over their turkey while I would be playing Burt Bacharach. So that's how I started making money. I've worked at places where men make more money than I do. I've been in bands where I've been treated as other. And the next thing you know, I am in France performing for this huge celebration with a few of my friends. Burlesque and new burlesque and cabaret was such a new thing in France. And we kept getting invited back. Our shows kept getting better till we made it to Paris. And in 2005, there was a famous French actor by the name of Mathieu Amaric. We ended up getting a three-month residency in Nantes, France, on an island, and he came to our show and started writing a script based on our troupe of six American burlesque performers touring in France. We were women of all ages and all shapes and sizes. And it was very exciting to be a part of the neo-burlesque scene at the time. Here I was, Bay Area, born and bred, corrective shoe, braces, glasses, wearing woman, who's all of a sudden walking the red carpet at Cannes in my Walgreens manicure, you know? It's like all these fancy people. And our film, Tournée, ended up winning a Palme d'Or for best director. That was back in 2010, and the French still really loved this movie. I come back here, and because the film was not released in the United States, nobody gave a rat's ass. Let's just say the music and burlesque and performing doesn't pay very much. And I, I definitely fell into a huge depression, especially when that ended, because I didn't really feel connected to France anymore, and I definitely didn't feel connected to the San Francisco scene anymore. I almost feel like I have to beg for tips. Like I tell people, hey, I'm, I'm originally from the Bay Area and I'm an artist who still lives here. And you don't make a living wage as an artist. I've changed my repertoire just to appeal to the kids and the folks that are coming into bars these days.
people aren't really listening to me. Like I said, they love the idea of having a live musician, but they don't really nurture it. It's like having a potted plant, but if you don't water it, it's gonna die. So I sort of feel like a potted plant. <laughs> I'm going to give San Francisco one more year. I've been here since 1981. I am born and raised in the Bay Area and I just feel it's not for me. I'm gonna keep trying. And if the struggle becomes too hard, then I'm gonna to have to move on. I don't know where that's gonna be, but I love it here so much. You know, I used to dabble in substances and I don't do that anymore at all. I do this sober and it's part of staying sane and sober and happy is to be able to play music and perform and express myself. And if I can make just a few people happy of all different ages, then I think I've done my job. So I have to, to stay sane. I feel like the piano and music in general, with my voice together, I feel really powerful and strong.